G'day guys, today I'm going to talk to you about float lining which is definitely one of my favourite types of fishing. Um, I'm a true and true bait fisher by heart really. I don't do a lot of plastic fishing so I use a lot of different methods to catch um, fish on bait but this is my main method is float lining. You can either use um, a double gang hook, something similar to that. That's um, double 5 Gamagatsu Gangsters with a swivel run between. See that they move nice and freely. That's what you want in a hook. You want it to, you don't want it to kink up and pull because if you kink your swivel, you can break it and you don't want to do that when you're hooked up to a good fish. So you want it to be able to move pretty freely. Well, the other method is to snell. I don't usually use red hooks. I usually use something more like a big gun or just a normal small J hook. Something like that. And today I'm just going to show you my knots that I use. Today I'm just going to use 30 pound fluorocarbon. I pull off about one and a half meters. Okay, so for your snell knot, I might tie it on the red hook because it just um, might show up a bit better. I hope you can see this. But what I do, first of all, tie a uni knot on the bottom. With this thinner stuff, I'll just run through twice through the eye, try to keep it pretty nice and even when you pull it around like that and you lay this one just over top of the other one, very simple knot but the strongest knot ever and then you just wrap it around one, two, three, four, five, give it a bit of a lick And then that just pulls up like a slip knot. And then what you do is you just pull that down. Like so. That way you've got two wraps around your eye, which makes it so much stronger. Two wraps with a uni knot. Make sure you pull it up nice and tight. Because if you don't, sometimes your knots will slip, but that's with any knot and you can just cut that off leave five mil on there or so and then with your other hook you just feed it on that way you don't want to feed it that way it has to lay that way so feed it on and you can set this hook to wherever you want depending on what size bait you're running I usually use pillies, so you probably want it to roughly go about there because you want this one straight through the top of the head and this one about three quarters of the way down towards the tail. So you just set that wherever you want and then you just start wrapping it here. And you just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then just pinch it there so it doesn't unravel and grab the end of your leader, the other end, and feed it back through that eye. And pull it up, and bang. That's the best snell knot you'll ever do, and easiest, and strongest. And the best thing about that knot is you can position this hook wherever you want it. Okay, so from that point, I usually start chuck either a glow bead or during the day I'll just put a little bit of this glow tube over it first and all that really does is stop your sinker bashing down on your hook and just making a noise in the water so so you can keep as quiet as possible and this acts as a bit of an attractant as well so depending on your current you really want to go as light as possible 
So sometimes you only want to run a tiny sinker like that. But I usually start off with something about this small, and if it's if it's too um, small, I'll go a bit heavier. Or if it's too, or if there's barely any current, I'll sometimes go unweighted. So that's what you really want it to look like, ready for your bait. And then what I do, this end, I'll tie a swivel on. Same knot, uni knot, but go through twice with this lighter, with the lighter pound. Anything lighter than 50, really. Go through twice, lay it over top. So it's like that, and then just feed it through five times. Three, four, five, pull it up a bit, wet it. And there you go. It's just like a slip knot, it'll slip down. And again, you've got two wraps around your swivel. It's never gonna come undone, and it's the strongest knot ever. Been tested out of all knots, I think, the uni knot, and it's been proven to be the strongest knot. I use it for all my terminal knots. Can't beat it. Make sure you pull it up nice and tight though you can lose fish to pull in knots but that's with any knot like I said before and bang you tie that onto your wind on leader so you usually run about three meters of wind on leader something probably with a bit more stretch in it not usually a fluorocarbon I usually run something like a supple leader a bit softer something with a bit, bit of stretch so then it gives you a bit of um Like, so if your fish hits really hard, you're not going to blow any knots, so. Yeah, and you do the same thing, exactly the same thing with your, um, with your gang hooks. Make sure with your gang hooks, you want something really sharp. These Gamagatsu Gangsters are perfect for chasing snapper. The beauty about these, um, You'll lose less hooks actually on your snailed hooks because what happens you'll find you'll get a better hook up. You'll get this one of these hooks right in the corner of the mouth and it'll never come out on those big fish. Whereas sometimes on your gangsters, I have lost a few fish just because gangs don't seem to pin the fish as well and hang in as well. But your snail hooks definitely hang in a lot better. You get a better hook up. Anyway guys, that's the tip for today and I'm going to rig up some rods and get out for a fish tomorrow morning and catch, catch a few squid as well hopefully and um, yeah, might even stop in the bay on the way back and um, have a look if there's any big long tails around, see if we can pull a big long tail would be pretty good. No worries guys, I will talk to you later. Here's a few pictures of a few fish I've caught using this method of float lining. Get out there and have a crack. Big wide casts, let it waft down and the fish will normally pick it up on the way down.